Welcome into 574 Sports right here on 91.1 The Globe. My name is Spencer Buttermore. And I'm Laura Hoover. Later on in this show, Spencer and myself will be sitting down talking a little bit more about volleyball. And also, Tanner Camp is in studio with yet another Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week. That's coming up here on 574 Sports on 91.1 The Globe. Welcome back to 574 Sports. My name is Tanner Camp, and to my right here, we have sophomore cross-country star in Stephen Cranston, who has been named this week's, week's Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week. Stephen, first off, congratulations. Thanks. And uh, just tell me, how does it feel to be this week's Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week? You know, it's, it's really an honor to be named Leaf of the Week. Um, I think that it is a testament to the work that we're putting in our program and coach's vision, and uh, yeah, just glory to God. That's great. And um, so, as you said, you know, coming off of a really good season last year, uh, what have you done over the summer to prepare for this season? And this can be both individually or just in general as a team also. What have you done to prepare for this season? Yeah, um, I didn't have the summer that I would have liked to have. I was struggling with some injuries, but I was able to get into a good rhythm during July and uh, really just up the mileage and uh, came into the season feeling pretty strong. And then, yeah. Just a lot, just a lot of weightlifting and running and stuff like that. So, that's good. That's good. Um, so, in general, with how uh, close the the season's already coming to an end, how would you say um, that they've been doing so far? And also going along with that, how would you say that um, the freshmen, knowing that this is a program that's trying to rebuild, how would you say that the team overall has been doing so far this season? Yeah, I think we're doing great. Um, you know, there's a lot of indicators that have really been encouraging. Uh, we're receiving votes already for the national, you know, ranking. So we're just right outside of the top 25, which is exciting. Um, and you look at our team lineup, every single race, uh, it's a different order. Uh, you know, from seven to number one, you don't know who's going to finish where. And it's really awesome. It's encouraging. Like you said, there's a lot of young guys, a lot of sophomores, quite a few freshmen. We have our uh, freshmen in Sal from Concord High School and then Quinton out from Oregon as well and just a few other people. So it's really encouraging to see the work that we're putting in and you know how it's paying off. And that's that's great, especially knowing that you're one of the, the main guys to kind of look up to them as a leader. So that's great that the team has been doing well. So um, you talked about you know the team in general and, and the receiving votes, which is fantastic. Um, prior to your first uh, run, what would you say is the, uh, the team's, what was the team's goal for the season, knowing that it's getting closer and closer uh, to coming to an end? Yeah. Uh, definitely we made a goal uh, during training camp to qualify for the national championship and in order to qualify you have to be in the top 25 at the end of the season uh, at, at the poll at the end um, and so throughout the season and even in the preseason and throughout the summer you know we we're really focusing on qualifying for nationals um, it's going to be in Vancouver Washington which is right in Quinn in my backyard uh, so that was really the goal and we've been pushing forward to get there so that's a good goal that's a really good goal so uh, what would you say and this does not even have to be um, in an actual cross-country meet or just uh, for a practice what would you say your favorite moment of the season uh, has been so far man just just the camaraderie of the team I can think of some runs where we've just had a lot of fun uh, not to get into too many specific details but our group just meshes really well and every single day is a different adventure, you know. We're always going to be talking about something funny, and we're always going to have a lot of laughs. So overall, this is probably my favorite team that I've ever been a part of. So, And that's great to hear that helps out, especially with a sport like cross country, knowing that when others can be there to help and support you. So that's great to see. Um, as you get closer, knowing that you're a sophomore and you're already al almost halfway done with your college career in cross country, what are you most looking forward to as you continue your college career here at Goshen College? Yeah, um, I'm definitely, you know, happy with the individuals who have been put around me um, and the promises that coaches have made to me have come true while I've been here. And so that's been really encouraging thus far and to see the work is paying off. And going forth, I'm really just excited to represent the college. I'd like to, you know, break some school records and whatnot. Um, and I think that we have the resources to be able to do that. Um, but really, you know, just engaging myself in the Goshen community, not just a Goshen college, but Goshen as a community itself, and just getting to know people, I'm really excited to uh, do that over the next couple of years. 
And I know we all look uh, forward to seeing that. Uh, you have any? Do you have any final thoughts, comments, inspirational quotes that you'd like to leave with? Yeah, uh, one quote that I always like to kind of think on is a uh, quote by Steve Prefontaine, a very famous runner. He ran for the University of Oregon. The best pace is a suicide pace, and today's a good day to die. Um, and I really like that because it just really has the go-getter mentality. You know, you're just going to go out there and you're going to give it your all. Um, and I guess my last comment is that uh, I appreciate you having me out. Um, and it's, you know, it's good to talk to you. Absolutely. And again, congratulations on Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week. We look forward to seeing you both in cross country and in track. We're going to take a quick break here, but be sure to stay with us here on 574 Sports. Back here on 574 Sports, my name is Spencer Buttermore, alongside me, Laura Hoover. Now we're sitting back down to talk a little bit of volleyball, taking a look at the volleyball team right now. They had a good streak going there towards the end of September. Uh, as of September 22nd, they took on Taylor University, a 3-1 win. Then on tw September 23rd, took on Spring Arbor University, 3-1 win there. Uh, they lost to Bethel College uh, there towards the later half, the 27th of September, 3-0, and then came out and defeated Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars uh, by a score of 3-2. They had a big gap there, uh, but now they've lost the last few matches here. Laura, what, what was the big thing to take away from that little winning streak they put together towards the end of September? Honestly, it was the games back-to-back. -back. I mean, they had a few games within a, about a week, week and a half span, and having about a week off of conference play really knocked them down, especially against the Huntington te uh, team early on this week. I mean, they came out strong, 25-22 to win in the first set, but ultimately lost three sets to one in that game. And you know what, they had a very hard road ahead of them again later on today, or yeah, actually today, Indiana Wesleyan receiving votes in the nation. And they already played Marion University both at home and on the road. So they had a hard streak going on in, the, in their latter half of their season, latter half of the conference play right now. And Goshen, they've been doing a very good job of keeping up the momentum in the first few sets and being able to stay with their teams. But... Once they start getting to that third and fourth set, they're really losing a lot of that momentum. A lot of that energy is going away. Penalties. Tanner and myself, who've been calling most of these home games, have really talked a lot about that. Penalties. Not being able to get that volleyball underneath their hands and setting it correctly. People not communicating on the court. And those are the main problems that they really need to fix, especially against coming up against Indiana Wesleyan University later on today. Yeah, you know, you take a look at the penalties, and those are, that's just giving away points. Um, at some points of the season, you know, they started off a little strong in the Crossroad League, uh, able to get into the top half of the conference, but uh, as soon as, it seems like as soon as they hit uh, that first uh, St. Francis game, uh, which has came all the way back at the beginning of September, uh, they lost four straight right there to Marion, Ian Wesleyan, also Grace, uh, before, they did, uh, before they were able to defeat uh, the Trojans of Taylor University. So um, what can you say about the start they've had in this Crossroad League so far in the season? Well, you know, the start of the second half has been honestly remarkable. Going, starting off with Bethel and then Huntington and then on the road to Mount Vernon Nazarene, all within about that October range. And, of course, October right now, we're starting to see, you know, a little bit more, more momentum pick up and had a non-conference game there between the two halves of the, of the season. But there really was a rocky road at the beginning of the entire season overall. They had a good run with non-conference teams, but... Having, having a little bit of momentum coming in out of a losing streak right into conference play did not help them at all. Yeah, you know, they did a lot of traveling there in the beginning of the conference season as well as uh, going to non-conference opponents as well as they were traveling for quite a few games there. Uh, they do get a little bit of a break towards the end of the season here um, as they're only going to be playing two away games. Uh, they're going to have to travel down to the University of St. Francis on October 25th and also going to travel down to Taylor University on October 27th. But other than that, they're playing at home. How big of an advantage is that for the Maple Leafs? Honestly, we've seen so far a huge advantage. One of their one of their small home games, per se, in the September, in the first half of the season, was Taylor University, and that honestly was their break to actually starting to get those wins in conference play. Taylor, incredible, incredible game. Everyone fought their hardest in both sides of the, of the court, really. Coming back, Huntington, they stayed with them almost every single set, being able there and having that home quarter advantage having you know seniors and freshmen be able to experience everything that a home court is offers to you has been fantastic and we've had great support so far from the rest of the Goshen students so I mean if we can 
if they can get people to come on out and support them, they will definitely have a chance of at least coming out about 500 this season. Now taking a look at uh, later on today, the Maple Leafs get set to take on the Wildcats of Indian Wesleyan University. That'll be a 3 o'clock start, like we said, at home. What's one thing the Maple Leafs need to do in order to pick up a victory here today? They need to keep it right with Indiana Wesleyan. If they can get the first few points of every set and not just keep the lead, keeping the lead is, you need to do that, but at the same time, keeping within a two-point difference. If they can get extremely close and go on a few long runs but keep close within the team, they can pull it off. Once you start getting into the, a little bit above five to ten points, it gets a little bit hard to come back from that. Goshen's done it before. We've seen it over and over again going into five sets. But if they want to come out with this one, they're going to need to keep it very close and try not to go into extra points. Extra sets they can deal with. Extra points and extra sets is a that's just something Goshen really hasn't been able to pull through yet. And so, like we said, women's volleyball plays later on today. Starting at 3 o'clock, that'll be a home game for the Maple Leafs, also in action. At home is going to be the men's soccer team as they take on the Cougars of Spring Arbor University. Then hitting the road is the women's soccer team. They'll be traveling up to Spring Arbor, Michigan to take on the Cougars of Spring Arbor University. That game set to kick off at 7 o'clock for both the men and women's soccer teams. For Laura Hoover and myself, you've been listening to 574 Sports here on 91.1 The Globe.